15 seconds late. That's what I get for trying to go start work before the stream starts. <laughs> where are we? Where are we? Let's get zoomed in here. Good morning, good morning, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. We're on the same block, to show. We're on the same block. Let's attack the hair. We've pretty much, I still need some power clearing, but we'll leave that for later. I've got to do the dots, but let's attack the hair. And I think before I do that, yeah, we better sharpen up here. Let me get it. Seems quiet out there today. We have a small crowd today, do we? Black, the dark color you see building up on the stone here is it's fragments of metal, tiny bits of iron, steel, whatever. Got here with a knife, you know, the angle, I think you see it. The angle of the knife in terms of this angle here at the moment, it's, what is it, about 45? I don't really know how to measure such things. We change this according to what's going on. The carving I've been doing on this block recently is quite rough. We roughed out those black dots. And now I'm going to be doing the inner, I'm going to be doing today the inner strokes of the hair here. Now this doesn't require the knife to have a super, super sharp angle. We adjust this angle depending on the kind of lines we're carving. If we're carving a straight line, if I was going around a block or doing some architecture, whatever, you sharpen the knife more of an angle like this, so that there's more of a blade in the wood and it stays on a straight line. If I'm carving small, tiny circles, I would sharpen the blade more like this so that there's less of the tip in the blade and it can go round and round. 
the work I'm doing this morning, I want these lines to be natural and long and flowing. So they shouldn't be wobble in them. So I've carved, I've sharpened the knife at about 45. And once I'm carving it and holding it, there'll be a lot of steel in the wood at any given time. And it won't wander easily. It'll stay on path. It's totally flexible. And I'm not using all three stones this morning. I didn't use the strongest stone, the Aratol, because the knife wasn't broken. I used the medium stone. It's about a thousand grit somewhere on there. And now this is the fine stone just to put, to put the last polish on. The knife will be sharp. It doesn't need to be super sharp, scary sharp. It'll just be generic. should do it. A medium angle. It's about 45 maybe. I don't really know. We're doing hair carving, but don't get excited. We probably won't be getting to the part of the super delicate hair carving this morning. This is going to be the internal hair carving. Oh, it should be fun anyway. Let's see. I'm going to put a light on. And we'll need to get my lens in place. And let's zoom in. Who's here this morning? Nobody here but us chickens, it says. Okay, good morning, good morning. Oh, they stole my camellia oil, I guess, to show. Sure. No respect here, you know. People come to my bench and just take whatever they want and take it away and don't bring it back. And my camellia oil is now on the third floor up there. Thanks, guys. All right, let's give it a go.
Yeah, there's our first year cups. Take it nice and slow and steady. It's been a long time since I've done this. We've got both the blue, the blue cloth is in place and the back side is protected, we should be okay. Thanks for the concern. <laughs>
outside looking at the posters. I gotta go find some oil. I can't see this quite enough. So there might be some oil in the party room. Hang on a sec. Let me see what I can go and find. Head for the party room at the back. I need to dab of oil for this. Excuse me. What do I think is a famous Japanese square of watermelons? No, I'm, I'm not interested, I'm sorry. I know. These stories sometimes catch the attention of the, of the foreign press, whatever, and they start talking about how crazy the Japanese are to pay a hundred bucks for a watermelon or whatever. And the stories probably don't really mention the background. You know, fruit in Japan, there's normal fruit in the shops. There's good fruit, bad fruit, expensive fruit, cheap fruit, whatever. But fruit as a special item, as a gift, is also a thing in Japan. There's a gift season in Japan, summer gift season and winter gift season. And it's important sometimes you have to be able to give people gifts. I know Iwano-san, the paper maker, he just sent us a summer gift because we're a good customer of his. He didn't send a watermelon, he sent a juice pack, a box with 40 different packages of juice in it because he knows we can spread that around and drink it all together. And he chose a specific level of gift. He ordered it from a department store. He probably spent maybe 120 bucks or something, I don't even know. And we're supposed to look at this and guess the level and the value and whatever. And it, 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 so we all understand the sender of the gift and the recipient of the gift understand how much was spent. Any culture has the same thing, even in, in egalitarian cultures like America or whatever. Gifts are understood to have certain levels of value. And these melons and watermelons and whatever, the famous fruit that you see, 500 bucks for a strawberry or whatever it is, they're gifts. And there's sometimes there's an obligation. Mr. A has to send a gift to, to Mrs. B or whatever. And a certain value has to be transferred. And the gifts are markers. They're, they're not status markers. They're whatever. They're markers of value and of, and of respect. 
So those watermelons are prepared into the market to act as these placeholders. And somebody would buy a square watermelon and send it to another person, and the other person receiving it knows that guy spent 200 bucks. And the, the fact that it's a watermelon or a, or a dinner plate or whatever has no relevance to it. They're just gift markers. And people in other cultures sometimes don't get it. Wow, the Japanese are so stupid to spend 50 bucks for a melon. You know, that could be five, 50 cents in America or whatever. It's a different product in a different market.
Ooh, ooh, the chat's running along here, not catching much of it. Hang on a sec. Do I have any advice on buying glasses? What? I can't say anything about that. I don't know what the numbers are. Minus 10, minus, I don't have any idea. I need glasses. Go to the doctor. They will give you some numbers and sell you glasses. So, the, you know, this scope that I'm using here is actually, what can I say? I don't use my glasses while using the scope because, because the scope has different adjustments on the lenses. I adjust it to fit what I'm looking at. So when I'm looking at this computer screen, I need normal glasses, normal prescription glasses. And the scope itself acts as a pair of glasses for me. I can't I can't give any advice. If you can't see, get some get some help. I know. I'm getting older. You know, what what is there to say? I get a lot of crit not criticism and a commentary because sometimes I'm doing this. I'm looking over the top out there and down here. So I should perhaps investigate bifocals or tries instead of just switching back and forth, switching back and forth. But, uh, the small grooves and paste. Yeah, that's a good question. We'll, we'll address this when we get to the printing part. I'm, carving out very small, tiny little grooves in the wood. And if later when I get to this hair business here, how do we stop them from filling up with paste? Well, that's the printer's skill, of course. We rub the block with paste all over the place, but we must make final strokes in line with these grooves, which pulls the paste out. And this part, like here, where the grooves go in different directions, this is going to be difficult. <laughs> and you saw when I showed you the original, when I was tracing this, when I showed the original, the guy who printed the copy of the book that I traced didn't do a very good job at all. And it was gunk and crap and paste in many of these lines. It was difficult to recreate the position of these hairs because they had printed it so poorly. So yeah, hairlines fill up with paste if you're not careful. We are going to do everything we can to try and keep the, the print looking clean and good and not gunked up with paste. But I can tell you for sure there's going to be copies we have to throw away because we didn't quite make it. This is one area of the printmaking scene where the Western technology, they after they've carved and engraved and, and done whatever with their block, they roll on oil-based ink with a brayer. And in the Western technology, the ink doesn't go down into the holes unless they put too much on the block or something. So that's one case where the Western technology does at least make that one specific part of it easier than the Japanese side. Why don't the Japanese do it that way? Because they grew up with different kinds of inks and different kinds of pigments and tools at hand. It's not a better or worse, it's just a different... Sometimes in the print party room, when people get going on that, people who have done, you know, lino cuts or whatever in the West, they're astonished by this, that we grab a brush and slather ink all over the surface of the block. And they look at this and say, oh my God, it's a mistake. Why don't you guys smarten up? Just use a brayer and roll it on. That way there's no problem. It's just a different world, a different appearance, different tools, different technology.
more peaceful here this morning, isn't it? <laughs> Yesterday was a fairly quiet day in the shop. No new sales records, only a couple of parties. A pretty quiet day. Today I think there's more stuff scheduled. upstairs Cameron and Sugasan I think they're coming along quite well in fact he's got uh, what he's doing is instead of waiting for the whole process to be finished he's actually started the editing already he's pulled some stuff into the editing software at the beginning of the process so even though they're still days and days and days away from finishing the print he's already started uh, the editing so. now we're just we're, he and I were chatting yesterday about how to present the video you know Maybe even he should be there at the beginning. Good evening, this is Cameron Hoker coming to you from the Mocha Hong Kong Workshop and I'm going to present the next video or something. Well, how much of it? He's, he's actually going to make the thing, so should he present it as well? So we'll probably start off, I'll sit down. Hello, this is David Bull, blah, blah, blah. Together with me tonight is one of our associates, Cameron, blah, blah, blah. Cameron, what have you been working on? Oh, Dave, I've been working on it. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> do it like that. I don't know what we're going to do. We'll think of something. So. We'll see. Maybe he and I will chat about it this morning when he's here. So, Getting bored setting new sales records every day. Yeah, yeah, tell me about it. Uh, <laughs> it's a seasonal business, too. Remember, it's up and it's down. You never know. I mean, we've learned about this. People walk in the shop. Someone will walk in and look around and walk out again. And someone who looks quite similar, same type of person, have the same type of conversation. Instead of turning and walking out, they will grab some prints and take them you know, to the counter. We never know who's going to actually take prints home and who's not. And the people on the staff here, we, I've told them absolutely never, ever, 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 and I mean ever, capital E-V-E-R, try and sell stuff. They're here to facilitate, to answer questions, to help the people, to talk about it. They never try and sell stuff. Would you like to take one of these home or whatever? Give me a break. We don't want to do that. They don't get paid on, on the basis of such a thing, and uh, of course not. The idea about running a shop that had such things as commissioned salesmen, my God, I can't imagine such a such a mood of such a place you know. so no they know the seal we're just trying to make good stuff and make it available and talk about it and share the enthusiasm that's all we do There's a wider one. The wider ones don't come out in a single pop because in order to make them come out I want, I'd have to dig the knife in too deeply to make these V's match. And that would stress the wood too much. So I'm putting it in fairly lightly. And as a result, the, the V wood won't come out in one piece. But that doesn't matter. That's not a goal. At the end it does because it's quite shallow here. So this is going to pop out at the end, this part. But the middle area here won't come out. Top fill will pop off like this, but the, the cuts don't match down at the bottom of the cut. Mm. 
And once you've got it this far, you decide what to do to it. Do I leave that crap down in the bottom? And because we're going to be really careful about not trying to get paste filling these lines, I want to here's this kind of oh, Subisa. She's going to go upstairs, okay, whatever. So because I say, because we really want to try and make it easy to keep these things clear of paste, I am going to clear out a little bit of this stuff at the bottom. It might not go to a perfect V, but we don't need to go that far down. doing the poet series so many many of the kimono patterns were reversed patterns they were white lines on solid color which meant digging out patterns like this not just curved lines but square lines grid lines all kinds of patterns little tiny curly cues it seems to me like I spent half of that 10 years cutting out patterns like this and trying to keep them free of paste so I think we're doing okay Awfully slow at this, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Asking about print collections, I think the only person working here who is interested in prints from a, like a collecting or owning or accumulating point of view is, of course, Doisan. He's got a really nice collection of 20th century and Shinhanda prints. So. There was a funny one that, that reminds me last Monday, Doisan is in on Mondays. He's the oldest employee here. He's a little bit older than me. I'm 66, I think he's 69, maybe 70, I don't know. One of the somebody was was in the shop talking, and somebody picked up from the Doi Hanga collection we have here one of the Tsuchiya Kotsu prints. I think it was somebody from it was somebody from Europe. I can't remember the country. It might have been the Netherlands. I think we were chatting about this and chatting about that. And the guy said uh, he had received he had got a book a while back. He'd found it on some auction or internet auction or somewhere. And he, he said he I, he said he's picked up a book about Koitsu's prints. It was a complete catalog collection of Koitsu's prints. And he said it really turned him on, and that's one of the reasons why he came here to look at this, and he wanted to get one of these prints, and blah blah blah. Doisan and I are listening to this, grinning as we grinning ear to ear, you know, and that I couldn't resist. I got to tell you, by the way, the the book you just picked up, and I reached under the counter, and we have a copy we keep here. I said, it was it this one, the, the Koitsu Catalogue Raisonné? And he said, yeah, yeah, that's it. He said, this is so cool, this is so cool, so cool. So I opened it and turned to the back flap, where there's a picture of the author, and I said. Uh, Maybe he don't recognize it, but here's the guy standing right in front of you. This is Doisan, who uh, actually is one of the two authors of this book. And the guy's just jumping up and down. Wow, I didn't know what great guy. <laughs> so, and our Doisan is just, just so proud of having done this. You know, I mean, it cost him a fortune. This was not a book hired by a famous publisher. He and his co-author wrote it themselves, paid for the printing themselves. It's a self-published book. You know? I guess you could call such things vanity publications, but it wasn't vanity in the sense of they're trying to make a bestseller and the publishing companies won't look at me and what have I got to do? I got to do it by myself. They knew that it was a totally non-commercial proposition and that a regular publisher couldn't do this, of course. It was a labor of love. They spent years doing the research and then put their money on the table to have the book printed just so that the information would be out there for posterity. You know, so. So it wasn't vanity publishing in, in the vanity sense, it was just self-publishing in, in, in the, that's the only way to get it out there in a sense. And to have confirmation like that, that people were actually using this book and seeing it and, and learning about Koitsu from it, that was very, very uh, satisfying for Doisan to have that experience on Monday.
I'm not quite sure what staff is coming into the store today. We're in the middle of August Obon, so the regular staff schedules are a bit mixed up because people are off on holidays here and there. So I'm not sure. I think it's Teiko-san and maybe Koizumi-san only. I think we're a bit short staff today. So I'll probably have to be helping with the print parties. I'm not quite sure. We'll see who comes. Cameron's due because he's going to be upstairs working with Suga-san on the video work. But I don't think we'll be seeing Rachel for long. She's off with her family for the summertime, I think. Or part of the summertime. I see a bunch of questions and answers in the stream. And thanks, guys, for helping uh, keep the questions, uh, the answers flowing, you know, things that you can answer for me. Thank you very much. And every day, you know, new faces here. They don't know what's going on. So thank you very much for helping do that.
the sounds you're hearing outside. It's a delivery of gas to the restaurant next door. They get uh, the gas in our building here is piped up through the ground, the city gas. But uh, the restaurant next door has their gas delivered in tanks. And it's been uh, the guys taking tanks off the truck and putting it back on. That's the sound you've been hearing for the past few minutes. There he goes. The truck's on the way. There's a bunch of regular sounds we hear through the day as the deliveries come. That's the gas delivery. Later this morning, there will be a beer delivery. They get their beer delivered in kegs, aluminum kegs. And then the bar next to them, they get their ice delivered. It comes about 10.30 in the morning or sometimes. And the guy parks his little truck outside, drags a big slab of ice onto the back of the pavement of the truck, and he hacks off however much they want with a big saw. It's handmade ice for the for the bar. Handmade ice, I mean whatever, you know, you know, upscale ice, hipster ice, whatever you call it, I don't know. I'm not quite sure what you're talking about, but whatever. Hey, this must be the man himself. Hey, hey, hey. Hello, hello. hello, hello. How are you doing? Hey, it's warmer than that. Pardon? I think it's warmer in here than it is outside. Yeah, actually, that was funny. I got to talk to the kids about that. They set the air conditioner last night onto g -Dol. And as it got cooler in the evening, it turned on the heating system oh, and it no. heated it up. Oh, my gosh. There's three settings. There's heater, automatic, and cooler. Yeah. And I guess in the middle of the summer, it, it's been on automatic and the, the machine knew what to do. <laughs> but now that it's getting a little bit cool in the evenings, the machine must have got confused last night. Oh, no. So we've got to tell everybody, do not leave it on automatic anymore no. because the machine at 3 o'clock in the morning, it says, it's getting a bit chilly in here. Fire up the burners and let's oh, go. <laughs> so we could learn how to use it. We didn't even read the manual, right. you know, whatever. So, so, so. Oh, man. Right. Good morning, Cameron. Good morning, good morning Cameron. Good morning, Cameron. Good morning. Good morning. How, are you how are you? So, Cameron, welcome to the broadcast yeah. booth this morning. All ready for yeah. today's work up in the printer's room up there? Oh, yeah. Ready to go. <laughs> so quite good. Suga-san already here. Suga-san's already there. She's ready to go. She must be doing her warm-ups as we speak right now. She's ready oh. for the big game today. Got your cameras all okay. ready? Uh, nope, you've got one of them. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> details, details, details. <laughs> so. well, I was just chatting with the stream a bit earlier, the chat yeah. a bit earlier about, you know, you're doing, you're working on the next video. Yeah. You know, and how are we going to present it, you know? Yeah. Are you going to just do it all by yourself, or are we going to start off? Good evening, this is Woodblock Minnick and Dave joined in the broadcast booth here today by my associate, Cameron Helker. You know. Yeah, the co-anchors is what they're called. Co-anchors, <laughs> okay, yeah, so, so they figured out how to do this. You know, so. yeah. Thing is, I haven't, I haven't watched, like, sports TV in a bajillion years, so I don't know the catchphrases and, yeah. the, you know, whatever, you know. I don't know how to, yeah, so it's not really your bag either, so yeah. we should maybe do some training, take some lessons and yeah. stuff, you know. I think the last name I remember when I was a teenager, when we had a TV in the house, there was a guy called Howard Cosell or something who used to do things, you know, broadcasting. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember all the catchphrases yeah. and phrases, you know. So. so we'll have to maybe do some studying before we try doing that. Yeah. Woodblock Prince Sports Commentary. <laughs> We did have another episode, another, I don't know what to call it, a sort of ghost episode this morning, a really quite vivid one. Hishkalsen sent me an email last night saying she was going to be here really early this morning. Could I you know, get her package out of the right. fridge? So my alarm went off at 
the six or so. So first thing before anything, before toilet, before anything, up the fridge, get her paper out. Yeah. And actually, I was today. There's four printers working today. So I pulled the. There's wow. four. There's four. I pulled the paper. Ishikawa san is there. I know Ayumi san's coming today. So her yeah. paper came out. Day chan's paper came out. And uh, see, the sun's already there. Sun's already, already out. So I so I pulled out all four. Bang bang. I could relax a little bit. My basic number one obligation for the day is done. So then I come down here. I left the shop door open. Okay. And then I came down here to start get my breakfast. I'm eating my granola. I chatted with Jed on Skype, whatever, for okay. a bit about the next salute. Oh, yeah, I saw that. He sent so, that over. So I'm, so I'm downstairs. It's about, it's about 6.45 or something. And then I heard the, side, the, the shop door open, and then footsteps and bum, 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 going up above my head here. And it's as planned, Ishikawa going upstairs. Okay. Yeah, so, I said, so the half an hour goes by, whatever. And she must be up there getting her work done. I right. finished chatting with Jed. I finished my breakfast, doing my normal stuff here, have a look around the shop, getting ready. And then I heard again the door open and then up the stairs, tut, 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 tut. and then a minute later down the stairs, tut, tut, tut. up the stairs. Tut, tut, tut. So somebody's on the stairs. It's okay, whatever. We did leave the door open, so it, maybe Day Chan came early, whatever. So I put my stuff down, I go outside. The outside door is closed, not locked. I go inside, come up the stairs, nobody's there. I look around the shop, nobody's there. I go upstairs to Ishikasa. Ishikasa, no, who is Tsubisan? Somebody else is here? Just, no, that was you on the stairs, right? I said, well, actually, no, I was in the shop. I thought it was you on the stairs. Did you go down to do something? She said, no, I've been sitting here pretty. Look, blah, blah, blah. So I'm sitting here, and there's sounds. Somebody's walking up and down the stairs. And she's sitting up there. She can hear the bell going, bing, bong, bing, bing, bong. Someone's walking up and down the stairs. Uh, and this is not the first time. We, we, we wait, when else has this happened? This is the first I've heard no, of it. No, it's happened. I know when I'm sleeping, I'll be up there. There'll be a bing, bong. The, the thing goes off. And I know I now know to ignore it. But yeah. the first few times this happened, I'm like, oh, jeez, I left it up. Who's coming up in the middle of the night? You know is to it, you know, ignore whatever. the poltergeist. And okay. now, <laughs> well, now we, know, we know to ignore this. But there is something that hangs around that stairwell. And this morning it was vivid, vivid footsteps. I heard someone with shoes on, and yet no one with shoes there was on. nobody there. And the bell rang. It was enough to fire off the bell. So this is not the rats fooling around. I heard footsteps. <laughs> And there's no other way out. I'm right here. I think I'm going to put in my two weeks now. <laughs> <laughs> you never heard this. Just chat with her because this is not the first time she. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Huh. So Rubens thought, thought, of unusual size. I thought you were in on this. I'm sorry. I didn't know nope. you had, you know, it's not didn't something know about I, the uh, ghosts. Uh, you know? No, it's fine. I'm just using it. Set up a camera and. So that it yeah. takes pictures so, actually, every time we, the doorbell had, goes actually, off. Actually, I was at the point where I was thinking about this. You know, as yeah. Before we had opened the shop down here, when somebody else was in, was in the ground, ground floor here, I was going to think about getting one of the cameras here and put a, you know, a motion sensor. It's yeah. easy to get set that up for a while. And put, leave it on the stairwell at night and see what happens. Because yeah. I was thinking it was rats. Maybe they yeah. were big enough to set the bing bong, bing bong. But now and then you hear it as footsteps. And I tell you, rats don't wear shoes. You know, but so. not, not that I know of. <laughs> yeah. Really little tiny boots. I'm oh, sorry, I thought you'd known about these animals. I, I remember you mentioning the one in the middle of the night, and you just figured it was rats going or, on the stairs, they, yeah. but I didn't know that yeah. now you're hearing boots Basically, going. Basically, I don't even notice that. I just ignore it. These are two-legged rats with shoes, for sure. That's, that's, <laughs> okay. It's just 200 rats standing on each other's shoulders just wearing a trench coat <laughs> and shoes. But if it does really continue, then at some point we've got to do the camera thing. Yeah. It's not the rats, it's the crows. <laughs> they don't hear the crows much anymore. Yeah. No. So. Add Moku Hankan ghost tours as part of the Moku Hankan After Dark series. Well, if we could make them happen, yes. Yeah. But, uh, maybe, I mean, this place was a thing. This, the building has been different buildings built on this site. Mm -hmm. The Noguchi Shokudo, the previous incarnation, was a very, very famous uh, uh, Shokudo restaurant mm -hmm. you know, back in the early days when there wasn't such things as restaurants. 
and the building behind us that used to be part of the same organization, the one that's now the antique shop. Mm-hmm. It's got all these little cubbyhole rooms upstairs, and we've talked about some of this on the stream before, you know. This is where girls worked, you know. Yeah. So it was food downstairs, and it was, you know, ladies upstairs, and uh, you know, you take, your, take your evening's pleasure as you wish, you know. Yeah. And some of those girls, you know, you can imagine all kinds of stories that could have happened. Some girl that was sent by her family from the countryside, you know, into mm-hmm. basic slavery to work here. You know, there was some horrible situations. Okay. Probably still is going on. Yeah. So I could easily imagine one night a girl doing herself in herself. This building has perhaps had its share of you know, vivid episodes. Yeah. Of course, which we don't know because they would never be talked about. So. Right. So if you believe that kind of stuff, this is a, certainly a good building where those kinds of things could. Uh, could indeed have happened. Yeah. And then it's Lok Dori, which from back all through the 19 teens and the 20s and the 30s was a, a pretty strange place. Theaters and, and bars and gay places and all kinds of stuff, a subculture. Mm-hmm. You know, it was the, the core of any subculture activity in Tokyo mm-hmm. at that time, you know, of course. Yeah. So yeah, there's a history. Have you ever seen the movie Home Alone? The one about the young kid who gets accidentally left home from his family's vacation. I heard of two that. robbers try to get in. What they're saying, booby trap the stairs, Home Alone style. So that he... Yeah, that's just what I want with a shop here in Tokyo. Yeah. Booby trap the stairs, turn it on, and don't forget to turn it off. Yeah. Yeah. First customer today hanging upside down by his neck. You know, yeah, right, thanks. Next suggestion, please. <laughs> Six dead staff members all in a row, impaled by spears coming down the stairs. Yeah, right. Thank you. But probably uh, not the best. Not idea. the best idea. Yeah. <laughs> Do you work for an insurance company? Befriend the ghosts. You could always use more printers. Well, actually, that's sort of the approach we're taking, isn't it? Uh, we're not making any eradication attempts or whatever. Yeah. It's sort of, you know, you guys are going to be okay. We'll live with you here. You know, yeah. you've been here longer than I have. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, Shiba-san, of course, all her prints are about, you know, ghosts and yokai and yeah. stuff. The next one she's working on is a fairly bloody, you know, one she was here carving. Yeah. Was it last night? No, two nights ago. She's up in Sendai this uh, this week. Oh, fun! Is that where she's from? No, 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 no. I was, I was at she when she was here the other night. What's today? Today's Friday. So it must be Wednesday night. Of course, she worked a Wednesday right. shift here. Then she, at the end of the day, she said, "Can I stay for one year carving bench?" And I'm like, "Sure, whatever. Go ahead." So, so I was sitting where you are working on yeah. something, and she was sitting there carving. We're chatting about this, and then she said, "I'm off tonight on on my Yako bus night bus up to Sendai." Hmm. So I had assumed that yeah, that was maybe her uh, Jimoto or something. Like that. And she says, "No, no, no." It's the location where this spider story that she's carving actually took place, the historical, well, or the legendary huh. historical place. Where yeah. I said, well, we, but you're almost finished this. Well, she says, no, I want to get the feeling of the mood and sit there and, and, and drink a little bit and watch and see the flowers. And huh. So that when she comes time to print and start getting this going, she wants to be able to really feel the episode. This yeah. is where it happened. And, you know, mm. so and she's taken the night bus up there and she's going to... Get a cheap hotel and sit there and drink in to help the print be a better print. You know, it's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. He's like Jed, he's coming over in October to do sketching and traveling around for, for the series, you know. And these people, I don't know why, these artists think it's important that they be at the <laughs> <laughs> And she had the next one in mind after that. She she was taking the night bus from Sendai back to Tokyo, then down to uh, she told me I forgot Ise or Yokaichi or somewhere down there because oh. that's, the, that's the location of the next story that she's going to make into it. Oh wow, so she's already planned out the next she's one. She's planned out the next one and in fact that's where she's now because Sendai was just one day and she's now down at the next place. Huh. And she's going to jam in all these travels in her one week so she can be back working for us next Wednesday. So. Wow. She's pretty serious about this. Yeah. And she has, she is coming around. We are going to be printing 
favorite current ghost story. All right. Which is, before I give it to you guys to Susan, she herself wants to clean up the blocks a bit. Okay. Because the blocks at the moment, because she had always planned it to be printed by herself, there's stuff that is difficult to communicate to yeah. a printer. And she knows her quirk son. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Different. So she's going to carve something a bit deeper, and she might replace one block so that it's a bit clearer what to mm. do and stuff like that. But she's okay. on board. She's going to do it. And she's going to do the next batch herself of 20. That will be happening in October. Yeah. And then she will turn the blocks over to us. And yeah. we have to decide what to do with embossing and stuff and mm. to turn it into a Mokohankan edition. Yeah. So that the next print's bloody. Are you going to have to order more red print, <laughs> red pigment? Uh, How bloody is it? Well, I haven't seen it. She doesn't yeah. have an actual finished version to show me, you know. Oh, so yeah. she's making it up as she goes along. So okay. I've seen the key block. It's a double key block. Mm. One is a normal gray black key block, and one is in red. Oh wow! And I say no more. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see the guy holding the axe above his head. He's already taken a few swings, and now he's taking another swing. And uh, so kind of like that, yeah. John Becker says, uh, well, you have your solitudes, they have theirs. So. Pardon me? You have your solitudes, they, Jed, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they so, have so, their so, own, so. So. I guess so. Well, for me, I, I didn't do that with the intention of making prints. When I made those trips, actually, making prints of them was not even remotely on the horizon. Hmm. It was just, Dave, get out of town, go and sit, just do my, you know, chill out for a while. Yeah. Hmm which I did, and I didn't even make notes, I just, I just sat there. The idea was to, not to do anything. Yeah. And then later, in later years after doing it, the idea of making a print series. So I replicated the experience. I went back to the same 12 locations at the same time of year in the same place. It was easily 10 years later. And this time I took with me a camera and a notebook mm -hmm. to make notes about the stuff so I can replicate the stories. Yeah. I took the camera with me so I could get ideas for what the prints should look like. Yeah. So. But the first time through, the first time I went to those places, the stories that you actually read when you read the book, they they were it was no it was hands off. It was no camera, no notebook, mm. anything. I just lived those things as as you read in the book. The idea of making prints of my own, it was just unbelievable unconceivable to me at that time. And when I did put this series into production, when I started it, I, my daughter had been here for, for a winter holiday from, from her college in Canada or her high school in Canada. And she'd been asking, what's the next project, Dad? What's coming up next year? And, and I hadn't wanted to tell her because I knew her reaction. But then it became a funny conversation. Why are you keeping it secret from me? Okay, 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 relax, I'll tell you. I told her I was going to do a two-year project of, of prints of my own design. And she's like, oh my God, suicide. My father is suicidal. <laughs> I mean, she was saying this in a funny way because she didn't think I could do this. You know, yeah. She knew she knew me, of course. She'd lived with me all her life. You know, and she knew I couldn't draw, you know, yeah. which is still true. But drawing is not the only way to put images onto paper. You know? right. It took three years instead of two years. I enjoyed the time with her, especially after my two kids sort of semi grew up and went to live with their mother in Canada. They came back together for summer holidays and winter holidays, and then the inevitable day came. The older one, she was too busy with her own job and stuff, and didn't come back. So just the younger one came back by herself yeah. for a couple of those holidays. Mm -hmm. We had a great time. My God, the father and one daughter. And yeah. when the two girls here, they chat with themselves and they do their own stuff and they're oh, yeah. your dad by see you tomorrow and whatever. Yeah. But when there's only one of them there, it became so. We had some great, great father-daughter time. You know. Oh, that's absolutely great. wonderful. She'd be 15, 16, 17, something like this. You know. yeah. My God, we enjoyed each other's company. Never forget. She mentions it now and then when we see each other and chat with each other. Wasn't that cool? That's so fun. They're talking about Halloween. About Halloween. Oh, uh, because so these prints and Shiba-san and everything. Saying, is that a thing in Japan? It's... How do you say? Well, Japan has its own horror history, which well outstrips lots of what you find in the West. So yeah. Halloween is a relatively new transplant on top of that. Mm -hmm. And it has... Or there are a few huge Halloween parties around Tokyo, but it, people don't go out asking for candy to their neighbors no, no. or anything like that, like in the U.S. I don't know how it's 
celebrated or well, all over the world, it's changing now because of the cosplay thing. So the thing yeah. about wearing a, a simple, what was it called? It wasn't called a cosplay, it was called a... Just a costume. Costume, yeah. that's what it's <laughs> And that's now transformed. Yeah. Yeah. Opal is the closest analog to... Visiting ghosts and stuff. Yeah. Yes and no. It, what Obon is nothing to do with scary ghosts. Obon right. is, you know, there's a, a ghostly aspect to it, but it's simply visitations from your yeah, aunt's family. Yes, yeah. of course. There's no horror. Not that I know of. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. No horror aspect. Of it. Are you okay with Sugasan? Do you need to get going on the filming or what, what's um, the status? That's a good question. Maybe I should go check, see how yeah, she's doing. It's up to you. Doing. I mean, that's important. I'd like to do that. Yeah. yeah. She's just sitting there waiting for you to fill out. You know. I'm, going to, I'm going to need the tripod for another, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, but we've got another. You've got your right. so, so if you want to go and check, do that. That's okay. a priority here today. You know, okay. Not to sit here and, and do jock talk. Oh, that's so oh, bad. If, whatever we can do with that one. So. Contests. But Halloween isn't really about the horror either. Part of that's been vamped up over the years. I guess it depends on where you are. And I'm going to turn this back toward you. Okay. Right yeah. upstairs. Oh, that was the microphone. <laughs> Very dark. I guess it's detecting the brightness of the outside instead of <laughs> you, so you look like you're just a silhouette. So. Jim is leaving. He's bored. He's yeah, bored. So he can't handle this. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. He's going up to Sugasan. Right? His job, main job, over this week is filming the process that she's doing, making the print. And she's probably just started a new color block, so he has to get up there and film it before she finishes and moves on to the next one. Some of her color blocks may take literally all day. It may be, you know, a big, difficult background color with a gradation. It wouldn't take all day, but it'll take all morning. But other ones, a small little area of color could be over in in, in thirty minutes. So he's got to uh, he's got to capture with that. So so he's off up to work up on the third floor. On the other staff, what is it now? It's nine seventeen or something. We should be seeing. I guess Koizumi San Teko San should be coming in the door soon. I'm not really sure who's on staff today. So I'll just get back to my work and uh, we'll see who shows up. Some of these hairs will need both trimming and adjustment after we do the first test printing. And I've talked about this before. And I've carved f fairly close to the lines here, but a bunch of it's freehand. And there's a bit of wobble here. I can see maybe someone made this, this hair too back. There's a bit of a scoop here. So we'll need to smooth that curve up. I could try it now, but it's much better if I really just wait until we do a test printing. I can see clearly the wobbles in some of these lines. 
And also, too, after it's been proofed with, with black ink, the black ink soaks into the wood a bit. And black ink has glue and stuff mixed in it. And these, these lines actually become a bit firmer and tighter and stronger after they've been printed a few times. It makes the wood a bit harder and easier to slice. So I shouldn't fool around too much with it now. I should wait till I've done some test printing. But there's one right here that I can see clearly. It bumps up and goes down. Should I, sh should I shave it now? Hey, don't muck around too much. easy to shave too much. So like I said, I should leave most of this until the test printing later. So just finish. Let's just get the shape of the hairs cut. See what comes up later.
with somebody else. Take this out. Good morning. Take this out. She'll be the main shop staff today. She's just poked her nose in to say hello and she's going to dump her bags and stuff upstairs. We don't have too much room in the shop here for the staff bags and. Uh, Hello. Morning. Morning. Say hello to the stream. Be, be polite here. Say hello. Hi. Hi. あの、昨日の夜ちょっとクールトラブルあったんですが、あの、テクスさんが来ると説明します。はい。あの、クールあの設定。はい。が変になった。Excuse me a quick second, I'm going to turn off the machine back there. Okay, let me just finish up this corner. We've got what, one or two hairs just left here. Let me finish this up and then we'll call it a day here. Maybe it's just the last one here, is it? It's better with the door open, isn't it? Let me hear some sounds from outside.
We'll get just this last turn on the outside, then we're out for the morning. で、ね、小泉さんのお金合わないんですが、なぜかヨロの間に、あの、サンバ、サンバカーニバルのプログラム。はい。一冊売りました。はい。で、客さんが1000円出して、僕900円を釣り。はい。だからうちの作品じゃ